knocking, a faint knocking caressing my door. I lie awake in the dead of this cold winter's night, tormented by a knocking that is driving me to the brink of insanity. Away with you, I shout. I denounce you. Leave me be. Take what you wish. Take it all back. I don't need it any longer. I grabbed the crucifix hanging above this wretched hospital bed and held it tightly to my heart. The knocking ceased as I lay dormant. I couldn't take this torture any longer. For months I have dealt with this. I was being consumed by fear. I should not have to live this way. It's bad enough that I'm being eaten alive by cancer. Can't they just leave me be? Let me die in peace. Many years ago, I didn't contemplate death or consider the risks of the life I was going to lead. The only thing I cared about was the smokes in my pocket, the drink in my hand, and my paper on the table. That's probably why I find myself in this situation, lying in bed, coughing blood upon my chest, being tormented by the unseen, while unseen to everybody but me. About 40 years ago, I found myself within a slump. I had enrolled in a university, not because I yearned for education, but because I knew I could not live life comfortably without getting some degree and getting a miserable job. That wasn't the life I wanted. It wasn't the life I dreamed of. I deserved more. The only talent I had was storytelling, but for the life of me, I couldn't even get enough written to be considered a bloody journal entry. I would conjure up ideas of ghosts, goblins, and stories that would scare the living daylights out of anyone. But when it came to writing these tales down, I couldn't fucking do it. I would get a line written, but then I'd go blank. There has to be a better way. That's what I told myself. As a child, I grew up in a Baptist church, taught the way of living like this Jesus. He didn't much interest me, though. The one who did was the one called Lucifer. He didn't like the cards he was dealt, so he did something about it. That's my kind of guy. He told God to shove off. He would not live his days serving an inferior being in the form of a man. One night, as I sat at my desk, textbooks to the side of me, ignoring the ambition to study for my anatomy exam, I was trying, trying to write a damn book to get myself out of these living conditions. I wanted to live my life how I wanted, like this Lucifer. I laid my head on my desk and just thought. The room was silent, the only illumination coming from the small lamp sitting across from me. Oh, how I hoped that maybe something else would illuminate the room. I suddenly began to remember a parable that I had once heard. A flashback to myself sitting in a pew, sweat beating down my brow. My Aunt Catherine badgering me to pay attention. The pastor was spouting hellfire and damnation to all who would not repent. Church, open up to Matthew 4.1. The congregation followed his request, and halfway into the reading I began to perk up. He told a story that I found quite interesting for once, of how Lucifer came to Jesus in the desert, trying to tempt him, asking him to bow down, offering anything in the world just to bow to him. Why did the fool not take that offer? Who wouldn't? Suddenly, I snapped back to a rather dark reality, sitting at a desk in a dimly lit dorm room. I spat at the thought. If only that was real. Who wouldn't take that deal? If it's that simple, then let's do it. Devil, if I can have whatever I desire just to bow to you, I'm yours. You hear me? I'm yours, I said aloud, haphazardly joking. I sat there for a moment, actually hoping something would happen. Nothing. I should have known. 
With that, I took my sorry ass to bed. In the dead of sleep, I heard a knock at my door. I jumped up, scared off my ass. I looked at the alarm clock sitting beside my bed. It was 3 a.m. Who in their right mind would bother me at this hour? I waited in silence. Another knock. Trying to come to, I got ready to answer the door when a third knock tapped. One moment. I walked over and opened it. A chill came over me. Nothing was there. Nothing but a cold-ass hallway and an odd stench. I gagged. It smelled like rotten meat. I looked up and down the hallway. I thought it was probably just my imagination, so I closed the door, locked it, and turned around. There, on the other side of the room, I saw a pair of beautiful, luscious eyes. I shrieked. Quiet, child. Did you not call for me? A gentle voice rang throughout the room. Are you the devil? I asked, my voice shaking with fear. <laughs> a laugh sprang out. Not a vicious or demeaning laugh, but a calming one. Of sorts. The voice replied. Who are you? I am Hael. I am here upon your request, John. I was filled with so many emotions. I didn't even question how this thing knew my name. I called for the devil, not some- Silence. Do not speak my name. It demanded in a calm demeanor. You wish to bow down to my lord in exchange for a favor. So he has sent me to grant it. Yeah, help me. Right. It finished my sentence. Yeah, yes, I replied, trying to keep this thing from sensing my fear. There's more to this than simply bowing down, boy. You can have your favor, but we ask something in exchange. Your soul. My soul, I ask? Yes, your soul. It said sternly. It isn't like you are using it. It's more than a fair exchange, is it not? I thought about this for a moment. This thing was correct. I'd much rather live my life writing selling my books, having my name known, and losing my soul, than living this miserable life. You can have whatever you want, just help me, I cried. As you wish. Hold out your hand. I did as it asked. I felt a hot drip. He spit in my fucking hand. As I was about to shake the spit off, it yelled, Stop! For the first time, this thing seemed less than calming. A fear came over me. Swallow it. Its voice caressed my ear from across the room. What? Why? You must. I slowly brought my hand to my mouth and slurped the spit. My mouth burned. My tongue was on fire. It took everything in me to swallow it but I worked up the courage and did so. I felt the saliva run all the way down my throat, burning through my esophagus and then my chest. I felt an immense pain. I cried out, and then I felt nothing. The thing stepped out from the darkness, and I saw its face. Those enchanting eyes, a smile of teeth as white as bone and as sharp as obsidian, its skin was a deep purple and resembled scales. The one detail forever embroidered into my conscious was its horns, growing from its forehead and swirling up towards the heavens like that of a mighty ram. We will meet again, child, it said with a stern, cold demeanor. I then found myself in my bed. I looked at my alarm, 3 a.m. Was it a dream? Ideas began to fill my head. Great ideas. I jumped up and ran to my desk, turned on my lamp and opened my notebook. 
I began to write. It took no effort as my words flew onto the page. It was as if something guided my hand. From that moment on, my life was glorious. A month later, I had finished my first novel. I sent it to several publishers, each contacting me with interest in purchasing my writing, each offer higher than the other. I lived my life writing, partying, and having fun, up until a few months ago when I was diagnosed with lung cancer. Ever since then, I hear that damned knocking at my door. I see shadows in the dark. I see those horns in my dreams, and those eyes in the distance. Have I made a terrible mistake? I lay in my bed, calling for a nurse. I begin to fade in and out of consciousness. I look at the clock, 3 a.m. The knocking starts again, one knock. Please, it was a mistake. I take it all back. I want my soul. Be gone. Another knock. I begin to weep. The third knock. I then remember back to my youth. The night this all began. I remember the deal. The pact vividly. One memory in particular comes to me. Its name. The thing didn't want me to speak its name. What was it? What was this deceiver's alias? It started with H. I heard hooves walking through the door, but the door was closed. They continued to the foot of the bed. Wait, wait, I yelled. Hey, I. Hate. Hi, air. Those eyes at the foot of my bed jump up and get right into my face. It grabs me, smiles and yells, HELL! Hey guys and ladies, thanks for watching. If you want me to tell your story or read a creepypasta, email me at the address in the description. Be good to animals, even people. See ya. Go for the first time <laughs> and as sharp as obsidian and as sharp as obsidian i hate when this fucking thing's doing that